This is a bonus episode. We have put together part one and part two of our Work Less But Do More series. Thank you for tuning in today. Our mission is to equip and empower you to dig in and soar higher, doing the things that you love. This podcast is where you'll hear leading experts from around the globe figuring out what you could be doing to tackle your greatest business challenges. So get ready to hear from some of the brightest minds and boldest thinkers on how they're taking on these problems and how you could too. Now here's your host. So most of you know me, but for those of you who do not know me, my name is Joy Norman and I'm an empowerment and success coach. And I'm also the CEO of the international organization and movement Becoming Fierce Female Entrepreneurs. And I am blessed to help success-driven women entrepreneurs get past their fear and procrastination, move forward, take action and build a profitable and sustainable business without wasting time on strategies that just don't work. Even if you've been struggling to grow your business for years and you haven't seen much fruit. And also, I am the host of this podcast, which is a podcast all about uplifting, informing, and empowering women entrepreneurs to grow a sustainable and profitable business. Working your business can be tough and overwhelming, and it's easy to get lost in a busy life. And we just want to inspire you and support your growth. We hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of part one and part two of Work Less But Do More. Okay, let's get into this lesson. I am really excited about this episode because I want to talk about the number one thing I'm always asked, and that is, how do I get so much done running my business without being overwhelmed and stressed? Believe it or not, this question gets asked in so many different ways. People ask me, how do you feel content in running your business? How do you enjoy running your business and still have time with your family? How do you feel less stressed, worried in your business? Let me say, there is no one size fits all answer to these questions. I believe we entrepreneurs are burning out at alarming rates and some, not all, are not enjoying entrepreneurship. Believe it or not, I do get overwhelmed and stressed. So today I want to share some ideas with you. My goal is that after you watch this episode, you'll feel motivated and armed with a toolbox of strategies and tactics to increase your professional and your personal joy and happiness. All right, you know what's next. Disclaimer alert. These things may not be suitable for all entrepreneurs. These things helped me. I cannot say that all of them will help you, but my objective is to offer new possibilities to others. So some of you will make progress by applying these tips and some not so much. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so let me start with how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling joyful? Are you feeling energized running your business? Are you feeling overwhelmed and stressed? Or are you feeling stressed just thinking about your business? 
Generally, when I ask this question, most women responses are, I'm not yet enjoying it. It's a lot of work <laughs> and I don't even know where to start. I'm not very organized and I wish I could do better. Believe it or not, I hear this a lot when I am talking to potential clients and other fellow entrepreneurs, because running a business is not always as easy as some people make it seem. Trust me, I feel you. I've struggled with this several times throughout my career as a part-time entrepreneur and now as a full-time entrepreneur. Many entrepreneurs think that a profitable business blooms from hard work, killing yourself, posting on social media, or trying to keep up with the latest technology and trends. Although some of this may be true, but what if you could grow a thriving business that you enjoy and you feel happy about? Let's discuss how we can streamline our work, reduce stress, be more efficient, and just have more fulfilling days. Now, I'm going to share a little secret with you. Are you ready? But before I share it, take some time, take a few moments, grab a cup of coffee or tea or your favorite beverage. Okay, here's the secret. Contrary to popular belief, you don't have to overwork yourself as an entrepreneur. There's a familiar quote that says, entrepreneurs are the only people who will work an 80 hour week to avoid working 40 hours for someone else. This is so true. However, most entrepreneurs believe that the more they work, the more productive their business will be. On the surface, this sounds good, but what I found is just being busy shouldn't be the secret to business success. Because let me tell you, I've stayed up all night working and thinking I was being productive. But it turns out I was so tired, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even think. And I was like a hamster on a wheel. I was running aimlessly at an ever increasing pace. And like that hamster, I was so exhausted and I wasn't even getting much accomplished. For one, I'm not a night owl. I'm an early bird and I am most productive in the mornings. So make sure that you think about what is happening in the moment, okay? Is what you're working on, is it adding value? Trust me, if it is not, this is one of the fastest ways to burn out. But guess what? You can enjoy your work. You can enjoy your life and reclaim the freedom that your business can provide. <laughs> okay. So most people, when they see me, they say I live up to my name. They say I'm a joyful person. But deep down, I've always known that I wanted to be happy and enjoy life. And I discovered at an early age that I truly love working with and inspiring people. And I was blessed with two loving parents and a loving family. But don't get it twisted. I've also experienced the roller coaster of life's ups and downs throughout my life. And like most people, everything was not. Perfect. In my 20s, I went through some traumatic times and I felt 
unhappy and unconnected. And it was through much prayer, meditation, my faith, remembering my purpose and what my parents taught me. I was fortunate to rediscover my authentic joy and happiness again. And I've also been blessed to have awesome leaders in my life. And I've learned and I've discovered some incredible insights and strategies. And I want to share them with you. Okay, so the first thing you will want to do is identify what is zapping your time and why. Time management is big when running a business. And studies have shown that entrepreneurs who do not practice good time management are more likely to suffer from burnout and depression. And most entrepreneurs I meet, they are tackling everything. They are the manager. They're the personal assistant. They're the customer support. They're the tech person. They're the accountant. They are doing too much. Why, you ask? Because they are either afraid to let someone else do the task because they think that they are the only ones who can do it right. And they think that no one else can do the work or they think that they can't afford help. But trying to do it all leads to 70 and 80 hour work weeks. It leads to staying up late, drinking coffee in the middle of the night and trying to meet deadlines. Let me just sip my tea on that one. <laughs> But this in turn can lead to overwhelm, anxiety, and stress. And here's the other thing. There is no guarantee that you are even performing these jobs well. Trust me, I've been there, done that. But what do you do to overcome being the queen of everything? So, if you want to feel more joyful and energized running your business, you are going to have to stop doing it all. Stop being the queen of everything. By the way, I have a large coffee cup that says queen of everything. Did you hear what I just said? You are going to have to stop doing it all. Studies have shown that to reach the next stage of your business, you should only be spending time on the tasks that you excel at, tasks that you truly enjoy, and tasks that add the highest value to your business. And if you need to rewind and listen to that again, you should only be spending time on the tasks that you excel at, tasks that you truly enjoy, and tasks that add the highest value to your business. Okay, moving on. Trying to be the queen of everything will likely slow your growth and suck the life right out of you. And in my program, Package Your Superpower, I suggest that you let someone else handle about 90% of your current work. Now, I know some of you are just clutching your pearls right now. Yes, I said it. Let someone handle about 90% of your current work. <laughs> so take a minute right now, close your eyes, breathe and think about all the possibilities. If you start doing only what you truly love and what adds value to your business, this should make you breathe a sigh of relief. So stop saying you don't have the time, you don't have the money, you don't have support. 
you don't have the education and instead get resourceful and concentrate on what you want and how you can get there. Think about the tasks that you can outsource to others. Okay, maybe you don't have much cash on hand, but think about what can you barter? You can think about who you can barter with. You can also think about which friends and family would be willing to help you. Also, there are volunteers and there are students looking for extra credit. Also, there are professionals who are willing to work on a commission only basis. And so as you profit, they profit. Look, we only have 24 hours a day. So stop trying to do it all. I say delegate, delegate, delegate. And then the result is you will be a lot happier. All right, I can see it. Some of you are feeling better already. Okay, you can open your eyes now. The next one is you will need a system and not just a system, but a tested system. Studies show that entrepreneurs become overstressed workaholics with declining health and relationships because they lack having a tested system. Now, I didn't have a system either when I started my business. I was just doing whatever I thought needed to be done. It didn't matter what time of the day it was. I was wearing all the hats. And it wasn't very long that I started to feel overwhelmed. And I eventually hit a wall. So you will need to continually audit your time to determine the low value tasks that are sucking your energy, then transfer those tasks to someone who's better at them, someone who enjoys them. For example, give the technical tasks to the people who know how to operate all those apps that help make your business run smooth. Perhaps hire a VA, a virtual assistant. Then you can fulfill your time with higher value tasks that bring you joy and make you more profit. Then start the process over again. And it wasn't until I upgraded my thinking, I stopped procrastinating and I stopped self-sabotaging my organization's growth that I started to scale and grow my business. And now I'm able to spend more quality time with my family. I can now take time off and go to Disneyland. Now that's a funny story that I talk about in episode 33, Boosting Your Resilience. It's a story of me not having time to go to an all expense paid trip to Disneyland. Now, how can you not? Take time to go to the happiest place on earth. <laughs> okay, here is the funny story from episode 33. We moved to the new home. I had boxes everywhere and my birthday was coming up. My daughter had bought an all expense paid uh, trip to Disneyland and with moving, and you know trying to unpack get reorganized you know because i have to get on zoom i have my coaching program that started i was like i really don't have time to go to disneyland and my daughter was like mom really <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i just said let's go oh good plan right and the way you're taking vacations that sounds really good so do that and, and be guilt-free about it and Hopefully you weren't checking your emails too much. <laughs> I don't feel to one thing. Let me tell you real quick, because we drove. My son flew, but uh, my husband and I, we drove. And 
I didn't realize that one of the Zoom meetings, because I was right in the middle of doing my summit, right? And one of the ladies, I had a meeting greet with her, right? And uh, we're on our way and we're getting ready to go through the grapevine. And uh, my husband looked at me like, what are you doing? I go, oh, I, I do have one, <laughs> I have one Zoom uh, meeting. And he was like, oh, I said, it's only going to be about 15, 20 minutes, right? And it was so cool because going through the grapevine, she started looking at my background. Right. You know, and she was right. like, where are you? You know, right. so it, it was good for her, mm. you know, and we just yeah. enjoyed each other and talked. And so that was one thing I was guilty of. Right. <laughs> On right. my way to Disneyland. <laughs> Sit a little bit in the car there. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, the vacation hasn't officially started. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see how we make up those excuses? Yeah, I heard that. I did hear that. She <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> said, I heard that. <laughs> oh, my God. So I guess I could have rescheduled, but I just kind of felt like I helped her because it helped her relax and just realize like, oh, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, I can do what I want. You, you know? can, and, and part of feeling good and feeling resilient is helping people, right? And so you were able to bring a little bit of that in at the same time. <laughs> now, of course, there's a lot of research, trial and error that goes in to develop a full proof steps, okay, in um, your system. So I'm not going to go into that today. But for more information on how to work with me, feel free to visit my website, becomingfierceentrepreneurs.com. Okay, next, you will need to continually monitor your system because there will be times when you will want to slip back into your old habits, but we are not doing that. As you are growing and maturing and letting others help you, I just want you to stop, look around, enjoy watching your team's successes, and then take time off and go to the happiest place on earth, wherever that is for you. Okay, so far we have determined the right person or persons to work on the right tasks and projects. And you are making sure they understand exactly what you want. And you are giving them sufficient time to complete the task or the project. And you are sharing constructive feedback but you are not micromanaging them. Just follow the progress of the project or the task, okay? Because you are ultimately responsible for seeing it through completion. Now, because you have delegated, you are saving time you are leading, you are getting results, and at the same time, you are increasing your team's confidence. Woohoo! Remember, your job is to lead, get results, and increase your team's confidence. And if you can happily do this, you are well on your way to feeling more joyful and energized. Okay, next, celebrate your wins. It's important to take time out and celebrate your progress. Now, this is not about doing more. This is about being excited about what you have accomplished. So take time out to look at the small things as stepping stones to the big things in your long-term goals. What is your win today? So for me today, I was able to help three women entrepreneurs 
prosper in their business. And that will result in women packaging their superpower and people reaching out to their target audience. All because I share my program to them and they are able to create a purpose-driven business. And then that will give them the confidence to do something that they had only dreamed about. That is a win. I'm leading, I'm getting results, and I'm increasing confidence in others. All right. Next is you want to make sure you have a clearly written detailed action plan. And this makes it easier to set priorities and get started. It's all about making that commitment. So just make sure you are setting deadlines for every project. And you may need to make improvements from time to time. So make sure you're meeting with your team regularly. Before you start a difficult or an unpleasant task, think about a way to reward your team and yourself. So some questions that you can ask yourself and some questions you can ask your team are, which activities could be eliminated? Which activities could we reduce the amount of time we spend on them? And then which other activities could be delegated and or outsourced? And then going forward, how can we get more accomplished? Think about what are some many rewards you can give to your team? And then you'll want to include this in your action plan. Also be open-minded and then look for ways to save time. All right, number seven, you will want to make a declaration to yourself. So here's one that I like. It says, today I will pray more, worry less, laugh more, stress less, hug more, hurry less. So you can repeat your declaration as often as you like to give you that extra push of motivation and inspiration. So remember, you don't have to overwork yourself as an entrepreneur. My goal is for you to go from being stressed and overwhelmed to feeling more joyful and energized. Yes, and enjoying your life, enjoying your work and reclaiming that freedom that your business can provide. You can do this. You got this. All right, let's do a quick recap. So to work less, but do more, you are going to identify what is zapping your time and why. You're going to stop trying to do it all. You are going to create a tested system. You are going to continually monitor your system. You are going to celebrate your wins. You are going to create a detailed action plan and you are going to make a declaration to yourself. So here's a quote to remember, you can always get more money, but you can never get more time, end quote. Therefore, let me suggest that you spend your time on the things that make the biggest impact. So I hope these seven strategies on how to work less but do more were helpful. Remember, these are suggestions to empower you for change. We all want to feel contentment in running our business, but it does take practice 
and action. So for your action steps, what are three strategies discussed today that you are going to implement in the next seven days? Take a few minutes and write those down. Let me know what you are going to start with or where you need help. And I hope going forward, you start to feel more joyful and energized growing your business. Remember, you can enjoy your life and you can reclaim that freedom that your business can provide. So far, we hope you are enjoying this bonus episode. Here is part two. Welcome everyone to part two of our series, Work Less But Do More. Today, we're going to discuss the demands of leadership, mastering your mindset, and the importance of nurturing good relationships so that you can continue to work less but do more. My goal after you watch this episode is that you feel motivated and armed with a toolbox of strategies and tactics to increase your professional and your personal joy and happiness. Okay, let's start with the demands of leadership. So how many of you think that leadership is about telling people what to do? Well, I'm going to share a little secret with you. Are you ready? All right, but first, let's take a sip of our beverage. Okay, here's the secret. It's a quote that I like that says, don't tell people how to do things, tell them what to do. And I changed one word in this quote to advise them what to do and let them surprise you with their result. So don't tell people how to do things, advise them what to do, and let them surprise you with their results. Because I believe leadership is not telling your team how to do things. Instead, you want to let them know what needs to get done. You set outcomes and then put the responsibility on them. Over the years, I've learned that there is transactional management and then there's transformational leadership. And transactional management is when you tell your team what to do and then you check on their work and then you tell them what to do next. And if this is your approach, hey, this is your approach. I'm not telling you how you should do it. I'm advising, see what I did there? <laughs> I'm advising that this style is a cycle that could end up hitting a ceiling. And then your team may not be able to handle any more work. However, to break through that ceiling, you could try what I mentioned earlier, and that is you let your team do what needs to get done, and then you set the outcomes and then put the responsibility on them. And many thought leaders use this style of transformational leadership where you set outcomes, you measure their outcomes, and then you coach them. And this in turn empowers everyone to take responsibility over their role. Okay, so in part one, we discussed that you determine the right persons to work on the right tasks and projects, and you are making sure they understand exactly what you want. And then you are giving them sufficient time to complete the task and or the project, and you are sharing constructive feedback but you are not micromanaging them. 
And so just follow the progress of the project or the task. And because you delegate it, you are saving time and you are leading and you are getting results. And at the same time, you are increasing your team's confidence. And so your role is to lead, to get results and increase their confidence. So if you can happily do this, then you're on your way to transformational leadership. And so this is your tested system. And most of you have found out that this tested system really works. Thank you all for your comments and for um, reaching out to me and letting me know that this is working for you. And you are not slipping back into your old habits. No, 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 no. We are not doing that. And so you are now stopping. You're looking around and enjoy watching your team's successes. And you are spending time on the tasks that you excel at and tasks that you truly enjoy and tasks that add the highest value to your business. And as a result, you are spending more quality time with your family and friends. Okay, yes. So next, let's talk about mastering your mindset. Now, this is a wide-ranging subject. I'm not a therapist or a doctor. I'm an empowerment and success coach. And so today, when I talk about mindset, I'm talking about mastering your CEO growth mindset. And I want to suggest another style of leading your team. And that's simply leading without micromanaging them. So you are putting the majority of the work on the individual, and then you are setting the goalposts and letting them do most of the work to get there. So I know I just said a mouthful. So how are you feeling right now? Let's just stop and let that digest. Take a quick sip of your beverage. So this step is so important and you won't believe how many women I coach that say, they cannot delegate. They can't let go of the work. And they are afraid to trust someone else to do the work. And so for most of my clients, this is a paradigm shift. And remember, this will not happen overnight. So as best you can, try to rewire your thinking to a CEO growth mindset and give yourself time. So you have to make a commitment to change, to let go and embrace transformational leadership in which you give an outcome, you measure progress, then you coach. And this is easier said than done. I get it. This takes skill and practice. And you have to create an environment where you can offer your team critical feedback and you do not sugarcoat things. You just create a clear vision you are honest with your team and you let them know this is also new for you. It's okay. You let them know that your goal is to become a better leader and you can just make them feel, make them feel heard by listening. You accept their input. And most of the time, my team they have great ideas and feedback that they share. Um, they're not afraid to speak up and offer their suggestions. And I believe these are the prerequisites for running a successful business. And it does take some time to build your team. 
And it doesn't mean you won't lose individuals from time to time because turnover is going to happen. But don't take it personal. Just keep building your organization's culture and then make your business a place where individuals can thrive. And just keep the lines of communication open, invite feedback. And if you need training, it's okay. Get training, feel free to reach out for coaching and mentorship. By doing this, you are helping your team grow and learn without much involvement from you. And this is where the magic happens. Besides, you're going to be so happy enjoying doing the things that you love. And you're going to stop doing it all. And you're going to stop being the queen of everything. Queen of everything. I've moved on from this cup. And now I am fired up, focused, and fierce. That's right. <laughs> I have some exciting news to share. My book journal is now available. Are you ready to embark on a journey of fearless self-discovery and empowerment? Look no further than Fearless Reflections. This journal offers busy women leaders the space to capture your innermost thoughts, ideas, and reflections with plenty of room for your unique journey. It's your canvas to paint the picture of your empowered future. Start your your journey today with Fearless Reflections. To pick up your copy, go to my website, becomingfierceentrepreneurs.com or to amazon.com. Woohoo! Thank you for your support. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about the importance of nurturing good relationships. So human beings have a yearning to connect. However, relationships take time. And I'm going to share another secret with you. Everyone will not like you. Did you hear what I just said? Lean in. It's true. Everyone will not like you. It's okay to admit it and let people know that you are okay with it. I always say, God did not give me everybody. I'm only called to serve certain people that need what I have to offer. I'm okay with it. I love who I'm called to serve. And when we nurture good relationships as CEOs, business owners, and or entrepreneurs, our team's potential can develop infinitely. The key is to constantly strive to be of service. So CEOs that are committed to serving the greater good qualifies you as top leaders of organizations. And as a result, you have a good time achieving results. So another key in nurturing good relationships is showing dedicated support, gratitude, and giving back. And it's important to think about taking our love that we feel inside of us, develop it and express it outwardly in our actions. And when we strive to personify love, it is leadership at its finest. And we nurture those who work under our guidance and our leadership. So always strive to elevate, empower, and enrich the lives of others. 
So remember together, we are greater than we are apart. We work to build each other up. So it's very important to take input and feedback from your staff. We all work together and it doesn't matter at what level your staff is at. I love to listen to them and hear what they have to say. You can elevate them. They don't have to stay in the position that they started in. So for me, I love empowering and enriching their lives. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. So to work less but do more, you are not going to tell people how to do things. You are going to advise them what to do and let them surprise you with their results. You're also going to rewire your thinking to a CEO growth mindset. And remember your job is to lead and get results and increase your team's confidence. Also, you're going to constantly strive to be of service and committed to serving the greater good. Yes, and I hope these three strategies on how to work less but do more were helpful. Remember, these are suggestions to empower you for change. We all want to feel contentment in running our business, but it does take practice and action. So for your action steps, what are three strategies that we discussed today that you are going to implement in the next seven days? So take a few minutes and write those down. And then let me know what you are going to start with or where you need help. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Feel free to reach out to me. Go to my website, becomingfearsentrepreneurs.com. Click on the work with us page. Submit your name, your email, and in the message, let me know how I can help you. Also, if you've gained value from today's episode, or if you had an aha moment, I would love to hear about it. Leave a comment or go to my website. Also share this episode. We need to tell others that the small things are worthy of being noticed. This concludes our bonus episode, Work Less, Achieve More, the complete series. And I hope going forward, you start to feel joyful and energized growing your business. Remember, you can enjoy your life. You can reclaim the freedom that your business can provide. All right, everyone, have a blessed day. Have a blessed rest of the week. And we will see you back here on another Equipping You podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>